to the German language distance learning program for beginners. This is a joint program conducted by the Indira Gandhi National Open University in collaboration with Max Müller Bhavan, the German Cultural Center in India. Herzlich willkommen zum Fernkurs Deutsch als Fremdsprache für Anfänger. Ein gemeinsames Programm zwischen der Indira Gandhi National Open University und dem Goethe-Institut Max müller Paven, dem Deutschen Kulturzentrum in Indien. You're listening to Radio D, the radio language course of Redaktion D. A joint project of the Goethe Institute and Deutsche Welle Radio. The author is Herat Mese. Hello again, welcome to episode 20 of your German course with Radio D. Do you remember us talking about mysterious circles in village cornfields that were attracting tourists? It turned out that they weren't made by aliens at all, but by local farmers. Now, was that a lie? Or was it even a sin? Paula and Philip wanted to know what Radio Day listeners thought of it, so they asked people to ring their studio or send them emails. Listeners were supposed to give their opinion on whether or not lying can be a sin. Hallo, liebe Hörerinnen und Hörer. Willkommen bei Radio D. Radio D. Das Hörertelefon. Willkommen zu unserem Hörertelefon. Wir fragen Sie heute, kann denn Lüge Sünde sein? Rufen Sie uns an, Radio D, Telefon 030 389 Oder ganz einfach, mailen Sie uns. Radio D, So the topic is the lie, Lüge, and sin, Sünde. The first caller, Frau Frisch, is very clear in her opinion. She says that one group was clever, clever, and the other one was stupid or dumb, dumm. Now, who did she think was clever and who was dumb? Und da ist doch schon eine Hörerin. Frau Frisch, was ist Ihre Meinung? Also wirklich, mysteriöse Kreise von UFOs? Wer glaubt das denn? Also keine Lüge? Keine Sünde? Keine Sünde, keine Lüge. Die Bauern waren clever und die Touristen waren dumm. Mysteriöse Kreise von UFOs. Ha, wer glaubt das denn? Frau Frisch thinks the farmers, Bauern, were clever and the tourists were dumb. Die Bauern waren clever und die Touristen waren dumm. Who could believe in mysterious crop circles made by UFOs, asks Frau Frisch. Also wirklich? Mysteriöse Kreise von UFOs? Wer glaubt das denn? The intonation of the question, who could believe that, makes very plain that she thinks the whole thing is just nonsense. Wer glaubt das denn? But I have to tell you that even now some people are still fascinated by such circles and that even scientists are investigating them. As you may remember, the resolute Frau Frisch is Philip's mother. She gets very hot under the collar about quite a lot of things and Philip's very glad that he didn't have to take the call. Now listen to another caller, Mr Perini, an Italian. He doesn't take the farmer's deception very seriously. He finds it rather playful. What words tell you that? Und da ist noch ein Hörer. Der Hörer heißt Perini. Herr Perini, ist das richtig? Ja. Was meinen Sie? Allora, Lügen. Wieso Lügen? Das war eine kleine Inszenierung. I Inszenierung? Ma si, naturalmente. Ein paar Kreise, ein paar Ufos, ein paar Euro, alles ein bisschen mysteriöse. Basta. Und fertig ist die Inszenierung. Also keine Lüge? Keine Sünde? Scusi, aber die Deutschen haben immer ein Problem. Aber wo ist das Problem? Lüge, Sünde. Nein, nur ein bisschen Theater. <lacht> Danke, Herr Perini. Und nun bitte nicht mehr anrufen. Bitte nicht mehr anrufen. 
Well, you must have heard the word staging, inszenierung, and that's what Mr. Perini thinks the farmers did. Das war eine kleine Inszenierung. You probably also heard the word for theatre, theater. Lüge, Sünde. Nein, nur ein bisschen theater. And Mr. Perini goes on to list the things needed to put on this bit of theatre. A few circles, a few UFOs, a few euros, and everything packaged a bit mysteriously. Ma sì, naturalmente. Ein paar Kreise, ein paar UFOs, ein paar Euro, alles ein bisschen mysteriös. Basta. Und fertig ist die Inszenierung. As to Paola's question whether it's a lie or even a sin, Signor Perini replies that in his view the Germans, die Deutschen, always have some kind of problem. But he doesn't see why. Scusi, ma die Deutschen haben immer ein Problem. Aber wo ist das Problem? Well, we're not trying to justify ourselves here, but I do want to point out that the question put to the listeners wasn't meant entirely seriously. You probably remember that it was, can lying be a sin? Wir fragen Sie heute, kann denn Lüge Sünde sein? The question actually alludes to a famous song, Kann denn Liebe Sünde sein? Can love be a sin? Which was sung by Zara Leander in a film in 1938. The time for listeners to call in has run out though, so Philip asks them to stop calling now. Und nun bitte nicht mehr anrufen, bitte nicht mehr anrufen. But a female voice still manages to get through and say her piece. Philip couldn't have known that, but, well, do you know the last caller? Lügen haben kurze Beine. Ja, dann vielen Dank für Ihre Anrufe. It's Eulalia. She quotes a German saying that lies don't get you very far, because translated literally, they have short legs. Lügen haben kurze Beine. Can you imagine the image? Let's assume lies did have legs and could run away. That wouldn't do them any good, she says, because their short legs wouldn't get them very far. So the sense of the saying is that you don't get far by lying. But we'll get a bit further with German now, because here's the professor. Und nun kommt unser Professor. Radio D. Gespräch über Sprache. Hello. We're going to take a look at another characteristic of the German language this time, the articles. Artikel. They're the little words directly in front of the nouns describing a thing or an idea. Here are some examples. Der Hörer Das Problem Die Inszenierung So in German there are three articles or three kinds of the, der, das and die. Yes, that's right. Unfortunately, there are three of them and they have to be used a lot too. The articles indicate the gender of the nouns. The article der is the masculine. Der Hörer The article das is the neuter gender, that is, neither masculine nor feminine. Das Problem And the article D is the feminine gender. Die Inszenierung. Well, hang on. Why is it called die Lüge, the lie, for example? Are you implying that lies are something particularly feminine? Oh, good gracious, no. I hope not. It, it's extremely rare for there actually to be a reason for the gender of a noun. And it's different across the languages. For example, in French, lie and sin are masculine. Mm. So it's best then, isn't it, to learn the article along with the noun from the start to make sure that you use them correctly? Yes, absolutely. I'm afraid there's no way around it. Der, das and die are definite articles. But let me also mention the indefinite articles ein and eine. Ein Hörer. Ein Problem. Eine Inszenierung. So when do you use the definite article and when the indefinite? Is there a rule about that? Yes, there most certainly is. The indefinite article is used when something unknown is mentioned for the first time. Philip, for example, announces a caller who neither he nor the listeners know about. Und da ist noch ein Hörer. 
Paola takes up the information from Philip and defines it more precisely by naming the listener. Der Hörer heißt Perini. But using the wrong article isn't a disaster, is it, Professor? No, it's not terrible and it doesn't produce any misunderstandings. The thing is, though, that in German the article affects what's called the declination of many other words. But let's leave that for another session. Yes, I think that would be better. Thanks for that, though, Professor. A pleasure. And you listeners can hear those scenes again now, as well as a new one. First, here's a woman phoning in to the program. Und da ist doch schon eine Hörerin. Frau Frisch, was ist Ihre Meinung? Also wirklich, mysteriöse Kreise von UFOs? Wer glaubt das denn? Also keine Lüge? Keine Sünde? Na, keine Sünde, keine Lüge. Die Bauern waren clever und die Touristen waren dumm. Mysteriöse Kreise von UFOs. Wer glaubt das denn? And now a man. Und da ist noch ein Hörer. Der Hörer heißt Perini. Herr Perini, ist das richtig? Ja. Was meinen Sie? Allora, Lügen. Wieso Lügen? Das war eine kleine Inszenierung. I Inszenierung? Ma si, naturalmente. Ein paar Kreise, ein paar Ufos, ein paar Euro, alles ein bisschen mysteriöse, basta. Und fertig ist die Inszenierung. Also keine Lüge? Keine Sünde? Scusi, aber die Deutschen haben immer ein Problem. Aber wo ist das Problem? Lüge, Sünde, nein, nur ein bisschen Theater. <lacht> Danke, Herr Perini. Und nun bitte nicht mehr anrufen. Bitte nicht mehr anrufen. And to finish up, an email from a listener. Was ist das denn? Gesundheit, Josefine. Danke. Hallo, Kompu. Was machst du denn da? Ach, ich lese ein bisschen Mails, Hörer, Mails. Steht da? Ein Kreter sagt, alle Kreter lügen. Komisch. Alle Kreter lügen. Das ist ja direkt philosophisch. Aber das versteht er ja nicht. Ich schon. Ich nicht. What about you then? Did you get it? Maybe it'll help you to know that Kreta are Cretans, the people who live on the Greek island of Crete. So how come a Cretan is saying that all Cretans are liars? Doesn't that also make him one? Bis zum nächsten Mal, liebe Hörerinnen und Hörer. You've been listening to Radio D, a German course of the Goethe Institute and Deutsche Welle Radio. Besten Dank, dass Sie unseren Deutschkurs für Anfänger eingeschaltet haben. Detaillierte Informationen über den Kurs bekommen Sie im Studienzentrum, Regionalzentrum und im Max Müller Haven. Thank you for tuning in to our German language program for beginners. Detailed information regarding this program is available at your study center, regional center and at the Max Müller Haven.